Happy Father's Day to all our dads out there. And uh, thank you, thank you. Welcome to Youth Sunday again. Um, let's open up in a word of prayer, and then we'll dive into a bit of God's word this morning. Father in heaven, you are the best father of all. If there's any celebration on this Father's Day, it should be over you, celebrating who you are and what you've done. So thank you, Father, for all the dads in this room, uh, for blessing us with, with children. And Father, please comfort those who, who would like to become a father, uh, but for whatever reason, they cannot and are in great pain right now. A day like today is, is tough. Father in heaven, please comfort those who this day have lost their, they've lost their fathers, um, and it's a, a tougher day for them. Uh, or maybe for those, Lord, would you comfort them whose fathers are alive but maybe absent in their home, um, and they need you, Heavenly Father, because their earthly father is not present. Um, so may you, Heavenly Father, be our comfort this morning, our joy to every dad in the room. Um, for those who don't have dad, may you be their heavenly father. And as we get into your word, by your spirit, open our hearts and minds to your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, so excited this morning uh, to, to sort of bring you Youth Sunday. Um, it is a privilege and honor uh, to take one Sunday out of the year to highlight what God has done in our children's and junior high and high school ministries. And so I love that uh, your elders here um, value the youth at this church, that we would take some time and just think about, well, what, is God, what has God done and what is he going to do um, as we continue doing this Christian life together? And so I love um, that we get to take this time this morning. And so there's a lot going on outside. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we hope that you stick around and celebrate uh, what God is doing in the life of our young people, and we're, and just, and just join in. Uh, may this message, um, God, may God use it to kind of stir your hearts as you think about what your role is here at OCF in the lives of our young people. Um, we all have a role to play. If you think back to the video, um, there was a question that came up on the screen right at the beginning, near the beginning there, and the question was, "How has God transformed you? How has God transformed you?" And as you, if you remember uh, listening to these students up here, these children and these junior hires and high schoolers, and you saw pictures, you noticed there were pictures of people teaching. You didn't see uh, Chloe or Charlotte or myself or Ryan up there. There were other people teaching up there. But the primary way, is, as you listen to them, that God transformed them and God transforms us is through his word. You hear students talking about how they got deep into God's word. They started reading God's word. And it did a work in their life. And that, that's what I want us to see this morning. As we celebrate what God has done in the wings around this auditorium, in the children's wing, in the junior high and high school wing, it's all about what God's doing through his word. That these ministries, the foundation for these ministries are his word. And that as we dive into a passage of scripture that talks about God's word, the reason why we stand on his word is because it has the power to change us for good always. And he tells us God's going to tell Moses to teach his, the Israelites his commands. And so he, he starts to teach the Israelites, this is what you need to do. And Moses says, I want you to keep teaching this, all of you, because it's good for us always. And he warns them, be careful to do it. At the beginning of our passage, he, he uses the word, be careful to do this. To teach them uh, to, to know God's word and to obey it, and then towards the end, be, be careful. Be careful to do this. Continue teaching God's word uh, so that they will know how to obey it and encourage them to obey it. So if you would, let's open our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, if you have a, a phone, a Bible app on your phone, open it to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, if you um, didn't bring your Bible, there are Bibles underneath the chairs. We will be in Deuteronomy chapter 6 um, this morning as we turn there to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Israel is at a pivotal moment in their history. Um, as they are in the middle of the wilderness, still towards the gate, the door of the promised land, they have seen what God has done. As we read just this passage, 
you'll see what God has done for them. You'll hear about what he's already done for them by delivering them out of Egypt, out of the bondage of slavery, and how he said he's going to do this. He spoke his word and said to Moses to tell his people, this is what I'm going to do, and it's happened. And while they've been traveling in this moment, he says, I'm going to take care of you. This is my word to you. This is what I'm going to do to make sure you get into this land. And he's faithful to it. And so right at the doorstep, he says to Moses, tell them, this is what I'm going to do as I lead you into the promised land. You need to make sure you continue to obey my word because it's good for you. So be very careful. It's for your good always. And so they have the example of what God has done in the past with a mighty hand, a mighty arm delivering them out of Egypt. They have his example, his word to them about how, look, I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to give you manna from heaven. I'm going to provide for you. Your clothes aren't going to wear out. The soles of your feet, uh, the, the, the soles of your shoes aren't going to wear out. Uh, or your feet either. Um, and so, but, so you can trust me when I say you go into this land now that I promise to give you. For, my word is true. You need to remember to continue following me and obeying my word. You need to be careful to do that. And the primary way you do that is by teaching others to do this. And so when I say, hey, the thing I want us to see this morning is that the way we are transformed is when we teach and obey God's word. And the we, the we is not just us pastor elders. The we is not just uh, our children's directors or those of you who are serving in these uh, children's ministries, student ministries, or in men's ministry, if you take a role in getting up and opening up the word of God or leading a small group, the we isn't just those people. It's all of you. When we look at this passage, God tells Moses to tell all the people to be careful to teach everybody, especially our children, God's word and teach them to obey it. Why? Because it's good for us, God says, can never go wrong teaching God's word to anybody and telling them to obey it because it's good for you and it's good for me always. And so let's pick it up uh, in verse one. We're going to read most of this passage in chapter uh, six. There's one section we'll, we'll skip for just sake of time. But let's read through and notice just God's call to Moses and Moses' call to the people to teach uh, his people God's word and to obey it carefully. Um, Verse 1 of chapter 6. Now, this is the commandment. The statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart And I love verses seven to nine here. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Let's just stop there for a moment. I let this part right here, this idea of being careful to teach our children God's word, to obey it. Um, And how do we do that? Notice here, he says, I I want you to do that. Look at verse seven, teach them diligently when, and and talk of them when you sit in your house. Pastor Ryan and I, we talk uh, with our parents. We have a couple parent meetings throughout the year. And one thing is we just remind our parents, we try to remind our church family, like as today, that Ryan and I and and Charlotte and Chloe and the teachers and, and People on staff that volunteer uh, once a week on a Wednesday night or on a Sunday morning, we, we have a direct kind of one-on-one contact with God's word to your student or to your child that takes maybe 30, 30 minutes on a Sunday morning, 45 minutes. Uh, on a Wednesday night, maybe an hour, hour and a half. So maybe two hours in a week, two to three maybe, do we as your pastors and your children's directors and your youth leaders and, and your uh, children's directors or children's leaders get to bring God's word into their life. Two two to three hours a week. That's not good enough, right? And this is why God comes and says to Moses, tell all the people, 
Everybody needs to teach everybody God's word carefully, teach it, and to obey it. That we're, at, yeah, we're not good enough. <laughs> you hesitate. It's like, yeah, Ryan and I, our children's right, we're just not, it's not insufficient. We're, the, I think the ministries here are necessary, but our ministries are not sufficient. We're like, we're supplemental. We're like vitamins, right? You can't leave, live on Fred Flitzno's every day. Those are my vitamins of choice. Um, I don't know what, what they what they eat now. But you need your parents to teach you God's word. You need the Socia family to teach you God's word, to encourage you to obey it, and to understand that when you do, it's for your good, always, always. And so you may not have a PhD. We have two or three pastors that have PhDs or, or a master of divinity or master's degrees, or maybe you're not leading a small group. But you're a mom or a dad, and you at home can teach your children God's word. You can look at, look, it goes on to say, when you walk by the way. Um, they didn't have cars back then, but when you get in your car in the morning and take your child to school, when you go on that camping trip and it's going to take you 10 hours to get there, when you're on the way, when you're just going out recreating, you're having some fun, are you talking about God's word? And not just talking about living it out. I love what it says here, when you rise... And when you um, lie down, or when you lie down, when you rise, do you, before you go to bed, um, talk about God's word with your family, with your child, when you rise? Is that built into your life? Because, like I said, we have two to three hours. For you, if you come here, you get, what, a 30 to 40-minute sermon? And if you're in a small group, maybe you get an hour to two. Um, If you're not reading God's word regularly, so what does it look like for you, as you're taking it in, you're, not, you're getting it in so much, but how are you giving it out? What is your role to play in this church family so far as how you're teaching God's word to one another, especially to our children and to our students? Um, we, in children's ministry and in student ministries, we'd love to partner with you and what that looks like. I love what Chloe said, that when we have a men's barbecue, the high school guys are invited. There is no 16-year-old rule. Like, there's no, like, high school. If, Dad, if your 14-year-old son or your 12-year-old son wants to come to men's barbecue, bring them. It's awesome. Getting your, your sons around godly men, getting into God's word, raising them up to know God's word and to obey it because it's good for them. Always. It's good for them. Always. Let's continue on here in verse 10. It says, And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and and to Jacob to give you, with great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of all good things that you did not fill, and cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant, and when you eat and are full, then take care. Second time he uses this word care. Lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. And skip down to verse 20. When your son or daughter asks you in time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies and the statutes and the rules that the Lord our God has commanded? This is when he, when he or she asks you, when you're already in the land, why, why do we keep doing this stuff? Why do you keep teaching? Why does mom, dad, uncle, aunt, Joe down the, the road, village road, why do we keep doing this? Here's what you say. Then you shall say to your son, verse 21, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and grievous against Egypt and against Pharaoh and all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to give to our fathers. He swore. That was his word to them. His promises are true. Verse 24, and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God, and here it is, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are this day, and it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. I love this passage. Moses is just trying to encourage the people. Like, you're gonna, we're, we're at the doorstep, and God knows what's going to happen. We're a forgetful people. If we don't go in and remember to, to obey God's word, but before that, even remember to begin teaching it, constantly teaching it to one another, to our peers, especially to our children. When you get to Joshua, you find out that a whole generation comes up and doesn't know the Lord. You know why? It's because they quit teaching their children God's word. 
And they quit teaching them to obey. And they quit saying, you know why you should obey? Because it's good for you, always. When I work with high school students, the one, number one thing that I always keep in the back of my mind is, you know why we tell you God's word says stay pure before marriage? And we get into the reasons why. Because it's good for you. We talk about the goodness, that God's not this cosmic killjoy, that he has our best interests in mind, that he loves us. He's provided salvation for us and an abundant life if we go to him and go, God, just teach me what I need to do. What does your word say? Because it's good for me always. We cannot go wrong teaching God's word, telling our students, telling one another, telling our children to obey because it's good always. As you read scripture, always keep that in mind. When you read God's word and you come across a command, and not just in Deuteronomy 6, when you get to the Great Commission, we love that, right? Go into all the world, make disciples, baptize them in, in the name of the Trinity, basically, right? The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. And then we sort of, we don't put enough emphasis on the last part, teaching them to do everything, everything I command you to do. Why would Jesus say that? Because it's so good for his church. It's so good for his people. Always. And we want what's good for our children and our students, for all of us. Always, right? And so that's why we, we as pastors and children's directors, we stand firm on God's word for the little time that we have your students. And so it's exciting uh, to think about what God has done as you look at, if we, as just a, real quick, I wish I could take more time to just like sort of boast <laughs> on what God has done through all the events and all the activities. But let me just give you a couple things that, that uh, I think you should hear um, as far as what God has been doing and will continue to do. Uh, Chloe talked about uh, VBS. I think we use the word VBS a lot, or just the acronym, right? VBS. It's vacation, what? Bible school, right? We're teaching them the Bible because it's good for them always. Um, here's another one. And so last year, VBS uh, and Hume Lake were probably the two highlights for our, our youth ministries overall. Uh, when you think of Hume Lake, um, the first thing you think of is uh, hopefully a lake. Um, that's <laughs> um, and, but what often happens and what we need to do, I think a better job of telling our church family and telling our parents is that we don't just go to Hume Lake and get on a lake. Uh, it's not like uh, some of you going to Lake uh, Shaver Lake or Mojave Lake or you go to a lake, you, go to lake, you like a lake, you like the water. We're South Bayers here. We love the water, I think, hopefully. Um, and so we think, oh, we just roll up on a lake. Do you know, when students go to Hume Lake, they're in chapel twice a day. They're hearing God's word twice a day. After those two chapels, they're in Devo time, opening God's word. At night, they're pouring over scripture, memorizing God's word. I already emailed out the memory verses for our students so they can start memorizing now. There's a bonus verse they don't get that they get up there. It's a large chunk of scripture. They get these assignments for rec points, but I'm like, guys, don't, don't just memorize God's word to get rec points so you can win a t-shirt which is not even guaranteed among 32 teams, a dozen churches up there. Do it for its own good. Do it because it's good for you always. But they'll read large and memorize large chunks of scripture. They're just inundated. There are seminars that go on throughout. The, they, they, they're in God's word constantly. And I love it. And do they have fun? Yes, there's an afternoon where there's free time and we're recreating and it's awesome. And we get to shoot paintballs and get on a canoe or whatever, and there's some, some healthy community and fellowship that goes on. But what's at center at Hume Lake Christian Camps is the preaching and teaching and studying and memorizing of God's word because it's good for them always. And they come down the lake excited. And what we could do as a church family, as parents, know that yeah, God has done wonderful things and they've been inundated in God's word and help them to continue staying in God's word, knowing it, obeying it, and telling them over and over again, it's good for you, it's good for you, it's good for you always, always, always. Look at everything else that you might be struggling with. How's that going for you? It isn't always going well, is it? But God's word, God's promises, as we learn it and as we obey it, it's always going to work out for you, no matter what. And so I love, I love that we're, uh, last year was awesome. This year we're heading out. We're bringing 67 uh, students between junior high and high school, um, 12, 13 staff, um, and God's got some great things for us in store as we begin to dive in God's word. The, the speakers that Hume handpicks, um, they're not just these like um, motivational, emotive, like let's get all the kids crying and make these crazy commitments and then they don't know what to do when they get home. No, they're, they're like, these speakers, they are pastors, senior pastors, diving into God's word verse by verse. And they just let God's word speak for itself and say, it's good for you, always. And our students are eating it up and drinking and up, and they're excited, and they come home, and they're diving into God's word. And the way, so let me just get into some ways you can partner with this. So far as 
Hume goes and, and VBS goes. We're so intentional in these ministries. Again, the foundation that these ministries sit on is God's word. And so your role as an OCFer here, no matter how long you've been coming here, know that you can come alongside them, come alongside parents, come alongside these OCFers um, who have children, who have teenagers, and help them dive into God's word. Encourage them with, ask questions. How's your Bible reading this week? We should be doing this as peers in our small groups, in our men's and women's ministries, in missions. What, where is God central in our life? How are you, where, what, what are you studying? What have you been reading lately? What, what book of the Bible have you been reading lately? Um, how has it changed? How has it been good for you? How, do we tell stories of God's word in our life and how, how it's always good? How it helps us, how it encourages us? Is that prevalent in our own lives today? And so the one way you can partner is just knowing that this is what happens with Vacation Bible School and with Hume Lake Christian Camps. And throughout the year, on Sunday morning, Pastor Ryan and I, uh, while we're uh, during third service teaching, and whoever it is up here, Pastor Joe or Pastor Brandon, we've been in Kings. Uh, we're also in Kings. The difference for, for the most part, for the last 10 years I've been high school pastor, whatever you guys have been, teach, been te- taught up here, from the, uh, from the pulpit from these pastors, whether it's been Romans, we've gone through Romans, we've gone through Acts, we've gone through 1 Corinthians, we're learning the same thing. With the exception of this year, but they've been going through two books of the Bible this year. So we haven't been tracking with Kings, but we've been learning James. We went, we've gone through the book of James. We've gone through the book of Galatians. Uh, for Pastor Ryan and the junior hires, they've gone through uh, Kings. Uh, if it's a topic, depending on what it is, we try to stay typically the same. But you know why? So that you would ask these students, hey, what did... Uh, Pastor Mark or Pastor Ron, or you saw Mindy up there teaching our high school students. She's one of our high school leaders. You saw Esther Osgood teaching junior high. Uh, find out, which leads me into the, the next way you can partner with this, is uh, get to know who the staff are in your junior high, high school, and your children's ministry. Um, find, out, find out what we're telling your kids. <laughs> That's a good check on us. Um, and not just a good check, but to go, how is, how is God's word transforming you? How good has it been? Uh, I love what these students were saying. They're just so excited. Like, it moves them to tears. They just they get into God's word, and it transforms them because it's good always. But the way you can partner with us is to just get to know who. Stop by. You can visit anytime. Come to second service, and then come join me for third with the high school ministry. We worship. Pastor Ryan leads the worship team. These students that you saw up here, junior high and high school break off, and then we get into a little lesson into God's will. We'll be diving into uh, whatever the next series is. In fall, come, uh, we're going to get into the Gospel of Luke. And so know that high school uh, and junior high, we're diving into Luke. But get to know. And along with that, pray. Once you get to know some of the leaders in there and some people on staff, pray for us. It's an easy way to partner. Uh, just want to, as a side note, encourage this, this church. A couple weeks ago when I preached, challenged you guys to fill out these prayer cards and put them in. We went from like 15, 16, the Sunday before, to like over 60 prayer requests. There are real needs out here. And one of the things I didn't get a chance to talk about is as that prayer list comes out, I encourage you also to get on the prayer team, as that prayer list comes out, um, you'll see not only the requests from like this Sunday, but you'll see on there, pray for Charlotte and Chloe and the staff. Pray for Pastor Ryan and Pastor Mark. Pray for their staff, their volunteers, as we try to help our students know God's word, obey it, because it's good for them, always. Um, Final challenge uh, for you, or or, uh, just a way you can partner with us, rather. Uh, if you came through the front there, you saw an envelope wall. Um, there's root beer floats out. There's much bunch of activities and things like that. Uh, this is kind of what our one big fundraiser, our one big financial ask. And, and it's, um, it's this, that if you would grab an envelope, someone already, there's, there's envelopes number one to 100. Someone already grabbed the 100. But uh, whatever, whatever that number is is what you would donate in dollars. Um, and so I think the total is uh, 5500 bucks just from the envelope wall. And then with root beer floats, grab a root beer float. Uh, no pressure to donate, but if you would, feel free to donate. All the proceeds go to helping our students, uh, junior high and high school students, go up to Hume Lake Christian Camps this year. This year we're focusing on the student side. Next year we'll focus on the children's side. Um, but it costs uh, 7000 bucks to rent buses to take our... Our students up there, it's crazy, plus I have gas and all this stuff. Um, it costs 660 bucks a student. So if you have, we have families of two, three, four, five, um, and like you'll have three or four of these students. Um, mom and dad are like, I gotta put four kids through human language. It's thousands of dollars. And so if God's leading you, one way you can partner with us this morning is financially in all of those proceeds. Know that 
It'll go to help uh, our students get up to a place where they're going to be. It is the week, the one week of their life, if they go, where they're inundated with scripture like nowhere else. Nowhere else. And a, a, a time when they get so pumped up on God and his word. And so if God leads you that way, awesome. But, but pray for us. Come visit us. Come check us out. Come see what's going on and see what God does. And may God stir your heart to know what it looks like for you to teach others to know God's word and obey it because it's good. Always. Let's pray.